in the know for Sunday, June 8th. We're talking tornadoes on this special edition. Now, uh, starting off in Alabama, and this is really helping to illustrate a springtime that typically brings lots of tornado action south of the border. Here in Canada, we have to wait a little bit longer for our tornado season to kick into high gear. Now, this from the month of May in Kentucky, the nocturnal tornadoes so devastating and so terrifying as you just can't see it coming. But the damage and the aftermath, well, you certainly get a good chance to wrap your head around that. And speaking of aftermath of a powerful tornado, look at this. The sun rises in Missouri and surveying the damage. Again, this was all this May. Just many uh, tornadoes that we've seen. Now, here in Canada, you kind of have to fast forward from spring into summer when we start to see our tornado season kick into high gear. Here's a look at a twister in Ontario captured on camera last August. And that's kind of what we're talking about today is that sort of progression of our tornado season and uh, when things really uh, start to ramp up here in Canada because yeah, it's not just Tornado Alley that sees this kind of action. Let's bring in meteorologist Kevin McKay to help walk us through Kevin. Uh, what exactly our tornado season kind of uh, plays out like once we get in towards the summer. Yeah, well, it's kind of like building a puzzle. You need your three ingredients. You need the energy. You need some wind shear and you need some moisture and uh, early in the spring that is all down near the Gulf of Mexico. So first let's look at the shear. You need a trough. The trough uh, is a little bit of a dip in the jet stream that gets the upper level winds to go more so from southwest to uh, northeast. Now let's add in that hot humid air coming up from the Gulf and then once it starts to get towards the trough, that's where it gets unstable and it wants to lift. As it lifts, it starts to spin. Now, uh, as we progress from March to April to May, and now as going to June and July, we start to see that little pool of dynamics, that Goldilocks zone, uh, have more time further north. So we'll start looking at the northern plains, the Dakotas, the Great Lakes, and eventually the Canadian prairies. So uh, yeah, we heard of uh, Dixie Alley, that's the Gulf states, and then we get further and further north. Yes, you can get outlying scenarios where uh, you can get some summer storms in the south and we can get some mid spring storms in the north, but this is a general uh, kind of pattern. Now, uh, across the country, July certainly the most active month by far, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Uh, let's look at province to province. July is the most active month for most provinces except for Ontario. Now uh, this is a little skewed because Ontario surprisingly, uh, or not surprisingly, uh, sees the most tornadoes. Yeah, you think of the prairies they're smaller provinces, but yeah, Ontario does see the most tornadoes thanks to those lake breezes and just a whole lot of area to the north. Now, um, generally for our stats, we rely on data over a three uh, decade period. Now, how has it changed now that we have a new decade to analyze? Well, from the 1980s to 2009, every region has actually dropped in the number of tornadoes except for Ontario and Quebec. The question is, is this environmentally related? Is this uh, information related? Are we getting more uh, detailed reports thanks to drones and people being out more, uh, cell phone data? That is all part and parcel to the research going into the Canadian tornado season.